We all want to be faster, right? It's one of those things about nearly everyone who slings a leg over a bike. But did you know there are some really simple things that we can all do today that are going to make you faster on your next ride? So how can you eke out all that speed from your bike? We're going to dive right in and see if we can find you a few extra seconds for that next ride. While setting up your bike, there are a few things that make a huge difference to how your bike's going to feel and ride. Now, one of those biggest factors is tire pressure. Simply put, if you have too little, your tires are going to roll from side to side and will generally feel quite slow. There's also a much bigger risk of your tire puncturing or burping if you have a tubeless setup. Now, if you have a greater tire pressure, the tires are going to feel really nice when you roll on hard, smooth terrain. But as soon as you get to anything rough, they're going to bounce around and they won't be conforming to the terrain, which actually gives you comfort and traction. They're actually going to roll slower too, which you might not realize, but the effect of the tire bouncing off the terrain will have the effect of you rolling slower. Now, harder tires can also bring down your confidence because you don't have the traction or at least the belief of traction that you need to hoon it into those corners. The right tire pressure will keep your tires on the rim and avoid excess rolling from side to side. Punctures on the most part can be avoided too, and your tires are going to conform to the bumps and undulations of rough terrain without bottoming out on the rim. Now let's go to the next big setup tip, which of course is the cockpit. Now a lot of your comfort on the bike comes to personal preference. Being comfortable on your bike is going to give you more chance to focus on the trail ahead as opposed to the bike moving around underneath you. The more comfortable you are, the better the bike is feeling underneath you, the more you're going to focus on what you're doing and what you're actually riding. You've got to think about it like the bike is an extension of you rather than a mechanical object that you're maneuvering. Now this can be simple things like putting your gears and brakes inboard on the bars the correct amount or running your brake levers higher or lower. Now some riders like Johan Borelli swear by having almost horizontal brake levers but you'll often see XC riders with levers pointed all the way down. It really does depend on your riding style but it's a really good idea to find what's comfortable and what works for you. And whilst you're doing that, you want to consider testing out handlebar roll. And that means pitching your bars backwards and forwards in the stem, which makes a massive difference to how it feels and how it feels on your wrists, which does really affect the fatigue you get on rough trails. Now let's talk about weight. And firstly, we want to talk about removing weight from your bike. Now, removing weight from your bike is obviously going to make your bike lighter. And therefore, your bike is going to climb faster. It's going to feel lighter to ride you're going to be able to maneuver it nicely as well because of that. Now, a set of lighter wheels or tires will make the biggest initial difference to that because it's the rotational weight. This is what you have to turn around constantly. And doing this makes a huge difference to the way your bike accelerates and brakes. Don't forget things like cassettes too, because really that's a whole lump of metal. And some of those budget 12 speed cassettes may be amazing in what they can offer you as a range of gears. They can also be quite hefty. And again, that's additional weight. Another point with lighter wheels is that they will improve the action of your suspension. Heavy wheels can choke the performance of suspension at both ends of the bike. Other places of the bike that can benefit from a trim are going to be the saddle, seat post and bars. You can save a chunk of weight here fairly easily. And if you're really keen on cutting grams down, you might want to look at titanium bolts. They're a great bragging point too. Now you don't always want to just remove weight. Sometimes adding weight can be to your benefit. Contrary to what you might think, adding weight can help you gain speed. Putting some extra heft in the right spot on your bike can add stability by increasing the sprung mass, which effectively reduces the ratio of your sprung to unsprung. This is why the suspension on e-bikes feels so good and why they feel so stable at speed and through the rough stuff. Basically, the frame stays still and the wheels can chop around on the suspension nice and easy because you've got that firm basis there with all that weight on it. There's also been a few brands that have experimented with this in the past, including Orange with that prototype 329 downhill bike that had lead weights on the bottom of the down tube there. I saw that at Eurobike last year. Along with weight comes durability. Now on lighter bikes, sometimes it can be a little unnerving if you're doubting how strong, for example, some of your lighter components might be. Now, if you know that you're in no danger of breaking anything on your bike when you hit a section fast, you're definitely going to benefit from the extra confidence to ride fast over demanding rough and dangerous terrain. Look at the top pro enduro race bikes. They're often heavier than their downhill race bike counterparts. 
And it's because enduro bikes have got to withstand much longer races, so accordingly the racers will overspec them to last the duration. Downhill race bikes just need to last to the bottom of the mountain. You've got to think about it, the weight sacrifices doesn't really make any difference in a race that is one by tenths of a second. So they really want the bikes to be as light as possible. Give your bike some TLC. As good as your mountain bike and components might be, if you don't keep it clean, greased and running smoothly, it's certainly not going to be much good out on the trail. Get it clean. So what is it about a clean bike that makes it fast? Well, for one, if it's covered in mud, it's going to be heavier for starters and not in the right places either. More importantly, your bike is full of moving parts. Bearings and bushings need to be clean and free from any grime or muck that's gonna stop them moving freely. Making sure your bike is nice and clean keeps it running fresh and avoids any nasty buildup and nastiness around your bearings, bushings, or even behind the seals in your shocks. You've gotta think about it that clean suspension is gonna work more effectively too, so it's gonna make you faster at the end of the day if your bike is that bit cleaner. And once your bike is nice and clean and all that trail debris is removed, the next step really is to get out the grease. Grease and lubricants are there to make sure that any moving part that's supposed to move, moves very smoothly without friction. If it doesn't, that friction translates to slowing you down. This includes all bearings, bushings, and of course your chain. Make sure your chain doesn't get rusty and noisy. That will certainly slow you down on the trail. Lastly, with the TLC, of course, is servicing your beloved bike. Wear and tear is a nature of the sport. It's gonna happen with the conditions that we ride in. So keeping up with your bike's needs will keep it riding at its best and avoid unnecessary breakages out on the trail. There's nothing slower and more frustrating than having to walk back down the trails with your bike. Dialing your suspension. So last but not least, getting your suspension dialed in correctly is certainly gonna increase your speed out on the trail. The shocks on our bikes are highly sophisticated bits of engineering, but they're not faultless. They need to be tuned in to both riding style and weight in order to perform to their best. This includes setting sag, rebound, and compression settings, as well as volume spacers if your shock or fork takes them. It can sometimes seem like a bit of a minefield, but the important ones are sag and rebound. Now generally sag is gonna be around 20 to 30% of the available travel out back and 15 to 30 up front. Rebounds a little more down to preference so it's gotta be slow enough to control that suspension movement, but fast enough that it doesn't get bogged down. Uh, well, there you go. Hopefully you've picked up a few tips on how to make your bike faster in a way that won't cost you any money whatsoever. Uh, essentially, look after your bike, keep it in good condition. And to follow on with that, I'm gonna throw you to a couple of helpful videos. Firstly, click down here for how to clean your bike if you live in an apartment. There's no excuse for not keeping your bike clean no matter where you live. And Henry takes you through the process of that right there. And I've got a video on how to set your suspension up in 10 minutes right down here. Anyone can do this in 10 minutes. You can do it on your own. All you need is a shock pump and a bicycle. Don't forget, as always, to give us a huge thumbs up here at GMBN. And if you click subscribe, make sure you click that little bell up there and you'll get a notification every time we have a new video go live so you don't miss any action. And uh, give us a thumbs up. Cheers, guys.